What an unbelievably nice day, amen? And I heard the Bills won last week, too. Of course, it's preseason. It doesn't actually count, but we count everything. So, uh, If you've been around church world for very long, you've probably heard this passage of Scripture. If you were raised in, like, classroom environments, uh, Sunday school classroom environments or children's church, you probably heard this passage of Scripture. And uh, it's actually a significant passage. Let's just take a look at it this morning. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Could we read that out loud and together? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. If God were going to speak to you, what would that sound like? And what would he say? The challenge for us is, is that we just assume God doesn't have much to say to us. And here's what I believe. I believe he does have something to say to us. And if we're not hearing him, there are other voices that tend to take his place in our lives. And those voices are often not as well intended as God is towards us. A lot of times, too, we think that the only time we really seek God's direction is when we're in a situation we can't handle anymore. There's a lot of wisdom in bringing regular and ordinary situations and opportunities to ask God for his guidance in our lives as well. So the question I would have for you today is, what strategy do you have and do you employ to seek divine direction in your life? I think our journey is actually a faith journey. And so a lot of times when we approach faith issues, we tend to focus on facts, on history. We look at scripture and we memorize the, the historical data. We memorize the dates. We memorize the names and we memorize the rules. And all of those are significant and important, but we may be missing something. And that is that the written account that God has given to us in his word may also be used to help train our ears to discern his voice when he speaks to us. Jesus actually insisted that this journey of faith is relational, and you can't have a relationship where people don't talk to each other. So this is how he puts it in John chapter 10. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I've got a little Bichon at home. Most of you are aware this was a gift for a Father's Day about nine years ago. Uh, the, uh, it's a really interesting strategy to give someone a gift on their day. What are you going to say? You, can, you can't say no. So I have a little dog. Her name is Rory, and she does know and recognize my voice. She believes that all creatures in the world have been created to give her attention. She does. She if you come into our house, she assumes that you are going to give her all the attention that she craves and desires. And so uh, she does recognize my voice, and sometimes she'll be heading towards someone to get all this attention, and I'll just go, hey, and she'll stop because she recognizes the voice. But when I was dating the woman who would become my wife, what I discovered is that her voice and her mother's voice were terrifyingly similar. Similar. And so I know you don't remember days like this, but back when I was dating Susan, uh, we didn't have our own individual communication devices in our pockets. There was a phone that was nailed to the wall, and it had a long cord, and the most privacy you could ever get was just to go in around the corner to the other room and then talk lowly. But I would call and... Her mother and her had very similar voices. It, it required a lot of wisdom and discernment, but I figured it out. And uh, we recognize each other's voices. Can we learn to recognize God's voice? And the answer is I believe we can, but it requires a couple things. And the first is, is that we need to practice listening, which, which isn't easy. We're not good at this. Not talking is not the same as listening. Uh, often we don't really listen, we just wait to provide our information. 
There are times when you can pause to see if God has something to say. And here's what you need to know. We can't really put words in his mouth. There are people who try that. They try to speak for God. Or they'll say things like this. God told me to tell you. Have you ever had that happen? Before I met Susan, but come, someone came along to me one time and said, God told me that we're supposed to get married. And I said, well, God did not tell me that, and I'm, I did not get the memo, so we are not sending out invitations anytime soon. <laughs> we can want something so badly that we can almost try to add God's name to the end of a desire to make it sound more acceptable. So how can we know when something's actually, it's wisdom from God, it's direction from God. There's a great passage in James 3 that gives us some, some litmus test for God's wisdom and God's word to us. It says that the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. It's not contaminated with hidden motives and hidden agendas. And it's peace-loving. Our world is becoming far less tolerant of willingness to actually engage in and pursue peace with people who are different from us. You have to choose sides now on almost everything. And that wisdom doesn't come from heaven. Heaven's wisdom finds a way to get along peacefully. And it's considerate. It, it considers what other people are going through in their situation. It's submissive. It doesn't just rant and rage against any authority. But it finds a way to work with. It's full of mercy. A kind compassion towards others. Good fruit. It's impartial. It's not prejudice for or against someone. It's sincere. There's no falseness or hiddenness in it. That, that when we learn to hear God, these things will be consistently true. And so there's a lot of a lot of wisdom in learning to discern that. The second thing is, if we're going to learn to hear God's voice, you should know it just takes experience. It takes experience. It takes time to learn to discern God's voice in your life and to distinguish it between something God might be saying to you and prompting you and just a stray thought or a personal desire. And it, that's going to take some effort and some time. Now, when we begin to pursue God's will in our life, we should understand this, and that is that God's will doesn't lead us to become passive in life. Uh, a young man who's a, a friend of mine and a, a gifted communicator, uh, a gifted theologian, gifted teacher, uh, he was part of a church, and the pastor was going to retire. It was a great church, and so the pastor had announced his retirement, and, and my friend called me, and he said, I believe God wants me to be the next pastor of that church. I said, well, that's great. I said, have you, have you contacted the leadership of the church? Have you put together your resume? Have you contacted the leadership of the denomination to let them know that you're available and would like to at least be considered? And this is what he told me. He said, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. That way, when it happens, I'll know it's God. Um, they did not select him <laughs> to be the pastor of that church. He assumed that passivity is the way God gets his will, and it's not. Obedience is the way God gets his will done. This is a really important thing for us to think about. So God comes to our lives and he calls us to obedience. And that will require, that will challenge us. You see, we prefer certainty. I would just want God to make me sure. And what God wants to make us is, is to teach us trust. Those are two very different things. We crave certainty, but God wants to teach us to trust. There's certain aspects of our spiritual growth that were never going to be developed. And they will never be challenged until we're in situations where we're going to have to trust God. Now, asking God for guidance doesn't mean that he's just giving you the cheat sheet to the test. You know, they can say they outlaw prayers from schools, but as long as there are tests, there will be prayer. It's just how it is. You know, even, even kids who don't believe in God at all, it's, oh, God, please. If there's anybody up there, help me out. And, um, we wish that God would just give us the answer to the question or just give us what we're asking for. But you know as well as I do, right? 
if you give a child everything they want, anytime they want it, you don't get wise, mature, discerning adults. You get something else. God's a good heavenly father to us. So uh, hearing God's voice don't, won't make us passive, and hearing God's voice is not about taking a shortcut. See, we want the shortest distance between two points, and God wants us to take the wisest route. A lot of times when we're asking God for something, what we're really asking for is something to be more comfortable, more convenient, uh, closer, easier. Uh, we usually ask God for promotions. We ask God for increases. And it's not wrong to ask God for any of those things. But just think about this. Let's suppose you, you, you kind of saw the handwriting on the wall of the company that you're in. It's kind of going downhill. And, and so you go to God in prayer and you say, God, I... Um, I, I, I feel like it's time to make a change. I, uh, you know, if you could open up a door of opportunity, uh, what kind of company should I apply for? Uh, what kind of salary or compensation should I seek? And, and you're kind of praying through this. And let's suppose God came to you and he said this. What I'd like you to do is to stay with this company all the way until it closes its doors. In fact, you're probably going to take a couple of pay hits along the way. But there are some people around here who you can be an influence in grace for, and I'd like you to stay. Are we willing to hear that, or can we only hear the nicer, more convenient, increased options that God might speak to us? See, God's will is not always determined by what's easier or gives us a bigger paycheck. Wouldn't that be easy? I mean, that would really be nice, right? Oh, they're offering more money. That's God's will. That's not always how it works. So why do we need God to speak into our lives? First of all, we need assurance of who we are. We have doubts, especially when circumstances become difficult and uh, uh, we, we, we don't perform as well as we had hoped. Things don't work out the way we wanted. And so we start making assumptions about who we are and maybe about who God is. And so we need him to speak assurance into our life. We also need direction on where to go. Uh, we don't need to wait for uncertainty to seek God's guidance. There's a lot of wisdom in seeking his guidance on a daily basis. What would it be like if you could actually start a day or finish a prayer by just seeking God's guidance? There's a lot of things that, that we won't naturally think about in our life and in our world, unless God brings it up. And God is committed to making a difference by his grace in our world. So we can seek God's guidance in matters that, that will benefit us, but is it possible to ever get God's guidance in an area that we're not going to benefit from personally? I, I think so. And then God can also speak to us to keep us on track, correction to keep us on track. Uh, I think most people have a reasonably sensitive conscience, and so when you say something that's hurtful or you say something that's untrue or you fail to keep a promise, as a rule, we feel a little bit badly about that. But as sensitive or sometimes even oversensitive as our conscience may be, it's entirely possible that we can miss some things that we should have paid attention to that we didn't realize how our words came out or we didn't realize that we actually didn't follow through on something. We just forgot. Wouldn't it be nice to have a voice that reminds us? And you might be sitting there going, I'm not so sure that that's a good thing. But why does God bring those levels of correction to our life? And it's not to create distance from us, but to keep us on track. It's astonishing how far off course we can get just one step at a time. And so God brings these little uh, corrections, these little redirections. And once again, it's, it's not about condemning us or disowning us. The correction is because he sees our potential, and he doesn't want us to give up on that. Now, here's what I want you to, to think about. Most of us are not going to hear the voice of God in an audible way. You know, wouldn't it be easy? I mean, that would just be easy, right? God's voice comes into our life, and it's a deep baritone with sound effects, and it shakes the room. Like, wouldn't that be cool? Like, you would just say, oh, well, that's obviously God talking, but that's, that's not how it works. Here's what I want you to know. 
the voice of God usually, not always, but usually comes through thoughts and perceptions that enter our minds. See, I have a very limited communication reality. There's no way for you to know what I'm thinking or what I intend to say. I actually have to say things in a, in an, a way that can be understood and communicate the points that I'm trying to make. It requires words being strung together in sentences and put in an order that makes some kind of sense. God does not suffer with those limitations. God can actually even, well, let's just check. How many here are, are capable of thinking a thought while something else is going on? How many are doing that right now? You see? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm under no delusion about that. I, I know. So a thought or perception that enters our mind. How does this work? And, and sometimes we think, it's kind of like the argument, the internal argument that we have. I don't think it's so much like that. Like, an internal argument is what I have when I'm walking by the counter and there's, there's dessert on it. And I think to myself, oh, I, I, I would like to have that. And then there's something inside of me that says, yeah, you, you don't need that right now. And somebody says, well, that could be God. Well, it could be, but, you know, it, it's kind of like an argument. And then I'll start thinking like this. Well, um, I wouldn't want it to go to waste. That would not be right. And so I can come up with reasons. Let me give you a couple of examples. Sometimes when God gives us a thought, it's kind of like a declarative statement. There's no argument. It's just, it's a statement. We were building this facility. This is over 12 years ago. And uh, we, our church family was still meeting uh, on Marshall Road. And I was actually driving over here one day just to see the facility and how it was coming along. And uh, as I'm driving along, this thought entered my mind. Now, th there was no argument here. It was just a thought. And it's not the kind of thought I would think. This was the thought. You have given more attention to the establishing of a foundation of a facility than you have in establishing the foundation of leadership. And I just go, where did that come from? And I immediately knew I needed to give attention to that. And we did. Like We, we took that very seriously. We've developed a whole leadership training uh, opportunities and elder training opportunities for our church family so that our church family is well served. But it, it came as kind of a... A, a, a declarative statement. It wasn't an argument. I wasn't in tension between two choices. It, it just kind of surprised me. Another thing that can happen is, is you can receive a question that just provides some wisdom and insight. So uh, there was a, uh, not long ago, there was a situation. I knew what my decision was going to be. That wasn't the issue. The issue was how do I, how do I pursue this or, or position myself for this decision? And I was actually in another service. There was a, a pastor that was speaking, and he, he gave this incredible message on a passage of Scripture that says, if you please men, you cannot be the servant of Christ. It was a really great message. And so when I got to the end of that message, he provided the opportunity for us to have some prayer and reflection time. And so I just brought that matter before God. And, and I said, you know, how, how can I go about this? What's the best way? I, I, I'm not sure I have a strategy for this. And and. I felt like God asked me a question. If you were going to please people, what would you do? And the instant that question was asked, I felt like I had insight. And I knew, so that's going to be out of bounds. I need to think differently about this. God has a way of of declaring some things into our life or asking us a question that just starts to peel off the, the layers of confusion and doubt and complexity that we often struggle with. And he provides some insight to us. These are impressions that just give us insight to ourselves, to things that are going on around us, things that are going on inside of us. And that insight often helps us know how to position ourselves or how to proceed. It's a really important thing. It's helpful for us to be aware uh, how, we, how we can position ourselves or prepare mentally. Now, here's the thing. Every one of us kind of has our normal pattern of thoughts. 
We have paradigms that we usually see the world through. We have patterns that we usually follow through. We have predispositions, just things that we, we prefer. We have, we have ways that we tend to go about things. It's helpful to know that because if a thought comes to you that is separate from that, it's not a guarantee it's from God, but what if it was? Wouldn't you want to know that? I think God desires to speak. The question is, do we desire to respond? And you should know, God's not a bully. He's not going to badger us. He doesn't come to manipulate and intimidate us. He wants to lead us and guide us. And here's the thing. God doesn't just speak to us. He desires to speak through us. And this is challenging for us because it's very easy to start playing that God told me to tell you card. And I don't think that's how it, it's supposed to be. I, I can tell you how it kind of works for me. I was in a service recently and there was, a, there was a time for prayer at the end of it. And there was a young lady who was at the front and I could see she was somewhat distressed. And so I just wanted to pray with and for her. And uh, as I was praying, I really felt like God was giving me some direction. But this is what I did not do. I did not do, young lady, God is telling me to tell you something right now. Um, I don't know how you respond to those kinds of things, but lots of people that I know don't just assume that you're telling the truth right then. So I actually just converted some of those insights into prayer. And I just said, Father, I know sometimes we can feel, and then I just described that, and sometimes we can assume, and I described that, but I know that sometimes you would like to do, and I described that. And tears just began to run down her face. And so I just, I, when I got done with the prayer, I, I didn't have any, any additional conversation. I just prayed there were other people to pray for. I, I moved on. The next day, I'm walking through the lobby of the, the place that I'm at, and I, a guy calls me from the cross room, and he says, Hey, you! And I get, I get called that a lot. And <laughs> so I usually answer to it, and I just said, Yeah. And he said, uh, he said You, you prayed for my daughter last night. And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. Because you, know? <laughs> you might not know this, but pastors can make mistakes. Um, and so I just said, um, I, I wasn't aware that that was your daughter. I did pray for a young lady last night. He said, she came back to a conversation with me last evening at home. And the question that she asked was, did you talk to that man about me? And he said, no, I've, I've never said anything to him about you. And she said, it was like he knew what was going on in my life. And he said, that was God wanting you to know he knew what was going on in your life. And he said, for the first time in years, she had a positive conversation about God and about faith. Now, we can mismanage those moments because we want to take credit for them. But, ah, God's speaking to me. Shh. Okay, this is, this is what the Lord is saying. And we can do it that way. Most of us don't have the personality to pull that off. And there's a real temptation to call attention to us instead of him. So here's how I'd like to close out this uh, service today. There's a section of your notes, and uh, it's got some empty blank lines, and it starts with, Lord, I want to present to you. And this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think about something that's going to, something you're thinking through, working on an opportunity, a decision, something that you are facing in your life uh, just in the next day or a few days, all right? And what I'd like you to do is write that issue down. All right, just you can you can shorthand it. You don't have to go into great length, but maybe for you, um, there's just a lot of tension at home, and you don't know how to to allow peace to return, 
or maybe you're facing a fear right now and it's anxiety levels are rising and you're not sure how this is going to work out. Or maybe you have a decision to make. The clock is ticking. You're not going to get an extension on this. and You're unsure how you go about this. And so just, just take a moment and jot down what that issue is. It could be family. It could be a friend. It could be a job. It could be an internal struggle. Whatever it is. If God were going to give you some insight and some guidance, you'd really like to hear what he has to say about that. So let's just go ahead and take a moment for that. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to start all together and out loud just by saying what's on the screen. Lord, I want to present to you and then I just want you to name what you wrote down. And uh, maybe what you wanted to present to you was the person sitting next to you. So you, you can just cover what you wrote and tell God what I wrote down. You know. God can hear you and he can read too. It's... <laughs> and we're going to say that together and then we're going to take the next step in this. All right? So you all ready? Let's, let's start this together. Ready? Lord, I want to present to you there was a little boy in the Old Testament who started to discern God's voice, but he wasn't sure. And he learned to make a statement that enabled him to hear and respond. And so this morning we're going to say that statement together and then we're just going to take like 30 seconds and this is what I want you to do when we, when we take that 30 seconds. I'm just going to ask that you pay attention to the thoughts that come. It could be a thought of comfort. It, it could be a thought of an action item, a step to take. It, it could be an insight understanding about something maybe you didn't see clearly before. But we're going to take a moment. So this is what I'd like us to say. So I'll say this out loud and together, and then we're just going to bow our heads and, and, and take a minute to process this. Let's say this together. Speak, Lord. I am listening. Let's just bow our heads and see if God has something to say to us. So maybe you're here and you, and you kind of feel like you've been broadsided by something in life. It, it's almost like getting T-boned in a car. You're just driving along and the impact just, it collapses everything inside the vehicle. You didn't see it coming and you can't believe this is happening to you. And so here's what I'd like you to think about. God sees what happened. And there are jaws of life that will pry open what seems unopenable right now. And he's going to get you through that. that. It is not his intention or your destiny to be defined or destroyed by that. He's got something much higher, much better for you. Father, would you make those things true in our lives today? In Jesus' name, let's stand together.